All right, just finishing seasoning everything. Now, oops, we've tied it with some butcher's twine and I've seasoned the meat. It's important to season, if you have access to the meat, which I did, I seasoned the top of the entire joint with my seasonings. Now I used <clears throat> cumin powder, coriander powder, chili powder, salt and pepper. Now you can season it with whatever seasonings you want to use. Oh, and I used some uh, seasoning, so all-purpose seasoning. And the salt I like to use is um, not your ordinary cooking salt or table salt. I have some salt flakes, um, which I transfer to a different jar. Uh, I, I use this salt, sea salt flakes. Now let me just open it and I'll show you what it looks like. These are the salt flakes. Now let's sprinkle some on the eye. I've done that side. Now when you buy your joint, try and go for the joint that has darkened. This meat, that meat has had time to hang. Don't go for the bright red meat. Yeah, people automatically assume bright redness with uh, good eating. This will be tough, yeah, because it's not being hung. Anyway, this is the salt flakes that I like using. It's not rock salt, it's actually flakes. I find the taste and quality is superior to the table salt or cooking salt. Uh, good seasoning is important. Once you do that, before it goes in the oven, I'm going to sear the meat in a big pan or even in the uh, roasting tray because it's sufficiently thick that it can withstand the heat. It won't get warped or bent. So seal both sides of the eye meat. And the top here is bone underneath, so obviously not quite necessary to do that. So I'm just going to seal it before putting it in the oven and I'm about to just put some more coriander, cumin and chili powder on both sides. Right, so now we are going to just, I've already added some. But what I'm going to do is, from our um, selection of powdered spices, uh, use some cumin powder, coriander powder, chili powder. We're going to forego the turmeric, going for a more sort of Mexican type flavor as opposed to Asian. So, get some cumin and... We massage it in. Yeah, so that's your cumin, your coriander, and chili powder. Now, these spices we make at home by simply toasting the cumin in a dry pan, something like this, but obviously bigger. You toast your cumin when you can smell it. That's me. That means the oils have been released. What you do then is you grind it in a pestle and mortar and you get left with your various spices. Coriander seed, again, dry toast it. Grind it in a pestle and mortar or in your spice blender and then you have it stored in bigger jars and then transfer it from the bigger jars into your spice rack or spice holder or spice pots. Now, after the chili, we also need to put some black pepper. My pepper mill's seen better days, so got some here. 
Freshly cracked pepper, guys. Not black pepper powder. We don't want none of that stuff. I want to see freshly cracked spices. Now, if your joint has still got its own fat attached to it, you're not going to be able to do it to the meat. I've already done it to the meat because I got the fat sliced off and I asked the butcher to give me the fat back. Uh, so then I could obviously get access to the meat underneath, which I've already done. And then I put the fat back on and wrapped it myself, tied it myself. This is to ensure a more even shape so you have a more even cooking time. But you can still um, flavour the top of the fat because as this renders down and melts down, which it will, the spice that you put onto it will be in the fat that renders down and will continue flavouring the meat. So for argument's sake, let's say you've got it with the fat still attached, you can still add your flavourings to the top of the fat. So cumin powder, coriander powder, chilli powder. Okay, massage it in. Right, I'm taking over filming and we've got some of Aaron's mum, Aaron's my son, anyway, um, spraying a bit of oil. This will help to um, apply the spices. You don't need much, just a little bit. Okay, so this is just to show you guys um, if you haven't had the fat removed. But I never remove the fat totally. I cook it with the fat and then remove it if there's any left. But if you once you cook it, it, a lot of it will have rendered out anyway. So keep going with the pepper. Yeah, so we've put coriander, cumin, and chili powder. And then massage it in, rub it in. Rub it in, here we go. Now, it's up to you what you do. It's, um, you know, it's a big joint. So most of this flavoring won't permeate to the center of the joint. So it's going to have probably about 12 hours um, marinating time. This is essentially like a dry rub. Yeah. And you can also add all-purpose seasoning. So, yeah, we've got all-purpose purpose seasoning and then rubbed it in this has salt pepper and other seasoning and the final side again coriander cumin and chili powder salt and pepper rub it all in massage it in and leave to steep for a good few hours overnight 24 hours even better um but remember on a joint this large you'll never get all the flavor to go in it will create sort of like a crust or a bark on the top the outside and that is probably one of the final steps going to do just before it goes in it's going to get um caked in butter or butter rubbed all over it just to help with the um you know give it a kickstart before it goes into the oven which will be posted in 
the next video. So, Aaron's mum, how easy was that? Very good. Very good or very easy? It's going to be very good. All right, so without further ado, please like and subscribe and follow the upcoming and forthcoming videos. Wrap the bones in foil because they will burn. This will protect the bones. Because you don't want it looking like a black, blackened, charred mess. So, the easiest way to protect them is just wrap them in foil uh, and then towards the end, take the foil off. I probably would have done a better job, but with a bit more care and attention. Right, once you've done that, now this, I suggest, you know, especially in a large joint like this, do everything a good 24 hours ahead of time. This is all ready and prepped now to just go in the oven. The last thing that's going to happen before it goes in is um, it's going to get rubbed with butter all around the sides, the back, the top and the front. Not on the underneath because that's the bone, so everything's going to be dripping down and adding flavour to that anyway. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to sear it now, but um, I probably will give it a quick sear on both sides and the top and the front just before it goes in the oven. And um, I've got a tray with a trivet on it, but I'm going to make a trivet out of vegetables, maybe couple of onions, couple of carrots, just chopped up so it's not sitting in its own juices and the vegetables will also release their juices. Now, with those vegetables and the um, rendered out fat and bits that come off the joint and from the vegetables, this can be added to your um, gravy, which you're going to make later on. And the gravy that you make from the uh, meat juices is the most delicious gravy in my book so yes and it's going to be mildly spiced as well but hey this is fusion food at its best not confusion so that's our roasting joint ready and just preparing a few veg now right so what we what are you doing i'm wrapping the sprout Okay, what exactly needs to be done? Cutting the bottom. Okay. Out. And? And cleaning. So you're cutting the sprouts and taking off the outside leaves, which is not 100% necessary because they haven't got soil on them, but she likes them to look just so so if you want to do this just cut off the bottoms and take off the outside leaves it's a tedious boring and repetitive task it's a good task to get the children involved in i also find that putting a cross cut in the bottom if you take over from me let me just show everybody Right, so when I say make a cross cut in the bottom, just a little score like this. Doesn't have to go in very deep, yeah? So like that and like that. Now, it, I find it better to work with a big dirty butcher's knife. She likes using these titchy serrated knives, but to each his own or her own. These are the knives that I prefer using, yeah? And I do regularly sharp, regularly sharpen them. Some toku knife. There's a smaller one for exactly this type of job. 
So again, you get your sprout and you just like that and like that. As you can see, it's quite clearly defined. The uh, cross-shaped cut in them. This just helps um, the heat to get in there a lot quicker. Yeah, because I don't like veggies that have been boiled into next week. Yeah, so quickly, oops, quickly cook them, serve them up. I like to serve them up with still a bit of crunch in them, a bit of bite in them. So I'll maybe blanch them really quickly, but then I'll toss them in a bit of butter and I'll match the flavorings with my uh, roasted meat joint. So I'll put maybe a bit of coriander, a bit of cumin in there. Um, but what I also like to add is a, I like to add a little bit of mustard and honey into the mix. But this is right at the end because honey burns and it burns very easily. And maybe sprinkle some white sesame seeds or even black sesame seeds in there. Uh, I made them a few years back and everybody loved them. Uh, you could also, if you want, add um, some chicken or um, those that are not for, um, prohibited or can eat all types of meat. You can add maybe some bacon to it, um, turkey bacon, whatever takes your fancy. And there we have it. We're also prepping some carrots and parsnips. So carrots are going to be roasted and not boiled. Same with the parsnips. They're going to be done in uh, honey, mustard, and um, we're going to put some parsley in there as well. And again, that's at the end. The carrots will be uh, forming the trivet under the meat for the uh, roasting tin, and the rest of them will be roasted separately. And uh, obviously roast potatoes. Now with potatoes, they need to be peeled, parboiled. So I do them for between six to 10 minutes uh, and then put a lid on your pan after draining off the water. Then let's say for argument's sake, this is your parboiled potatoes. You shake them up and down vigorously to rough up the outside. This adds a nice crunch to the outside of the potato. So that is what we'll be doing along with the usual suspects, some peas, beans, sweet corn. Uh, we like our sides, vegetable sides. It's a good way of getting the kids to eat the veg. And um, that's it for now. And please wait for the uh, forthcoming video of our uh, cooking process. So thanks. For